Hello everyone, in this episode we're going to solve an example where we basically uh, find a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium outcome of an extensive form game and uh, the game is going to be a bit complicated than our previous examples and so I think it deserves a, a, a specific uh, uh, episode. So uh, this is uh, a, a two competing, competing firms in a Cruneau fashion but uh, the firms also have uh, the opportunity to, to advertise uh, their products. So here is the game. There are two firms, two firms, um, and I'm going to call them firm one and firm two. Well, firm one selects advertisement level A, and A has to be greater than or equal to zero. So you can think of this as like uh, the firm one uh, invests some A amount of money on advertising. Uh, and uh, basically uh, the firm advertises its own product, well, the, the product. Well, firm two observes A and then two firms simultaneously and independently select their product level. Huh. So the game tree is then simple. Firm one is choosing A. A can be zero, A can be infinite, but don't forget infinity is not a number. So, uh, but nevertheless, I just want to put some boundary there uh, but again, Al infinity is not a number you can pick. So I put this uh, sort of arrow indicating that anything in between zero and infinity is possible. So let's say uh, firm one picks A. Firm two does not make an advertisement. It's just firm one makes the advertisement. And so firm two observes the A choice. And then uh, both firm one and firm two simultaneously choose their quantities. What does that mean? That means firm two chooses some quantity between zero and infinity. Once again, infinity is not a choice to pick, but whatever it chooses, all right, all of them are in this uh, uh, info set of player one, meaning play firm one cannot distinguish the quantity. So let's call this Q1, uh, Q2, I'm sorry, this is firm two. And then firm one chooses uh, its own quantity. Uh, Q2 uh, could be zero and, and as, as large as uh, possible. So anything in between is possible. So this is Q1, I'm sorry, because this is the uh, quantity choice of firm one. And then, so given advertisement level, given Q1 and Q2 selected, uh, the game is over with the payoffs. And the payoffs are given by the profit function. So what is the profit function? Well, here, the first important thing is that the costs are zero costs are zero. And then the second important thing is that the, uh, the market price, the market, so once the, this is a Cruneau competition, just one firm has the opportunity to advertise, right? This is a simultaneous move game. Uh, be careful about that. Um, so basically we're putting sort of a pre-game before the Cruneau competition. And in this pre-game, play one actually determines how much advertisement to do. Well, advertisement is beneficial for both firms because it increases, it shifts the demand curve as follows. As A gets bigger, the demand shifts more and more, all right? So the bigger A, a better uh, 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 the, 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 the demand will be, and so they can produce more and they can obviously charge more. Okay, so that's it, that's the game. Oh, one, one, more, uh, one more final thing. Advertising, advertisement is not uh, free, obviously, it has a cost. So cost of, so again, cost of producing Q1 and Q2 output is zero, but cost of advertising is, uh, the following, 2A cube divided by 81, all right? So then the question is, what is the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium outcome of this game? All right, well, that's uh, kind of simple. Uh, why is that? Well, uh, because here, be careful. I mean, you need to understand the structure of, the, of, of this game. And then uh, once you understand it, you can understand how to apply the backward induction. So I'm going to apply backward induction. Uh, but here, be careful. Uh, this is not a sub game, right? Because, uh, you know, this decision note, uh, firm one will not 
distinguish whether firm 2 actually selected 0 or 10 or 100 or very large number. So all of those are, you know, dots means all of them are in the same info set. So therefore you cannot break those info sets. So here uh, there's just one proper sub game of this game, which basically starts player 2's decision node. So and this is a simultaneous move game. Firm 2 chooses quantity without knowing Firm 1's quantity, and Firm 1 choosing quantity without knowing Firm 2's quantity. So that's a simultaneous move Cournot game, and we know how to solve it. We know how to find the Nash equilibrium of it. Remember, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium means a strategy profile that constitutes Nash equilibrium at every subgame. So you have to find Nash equilibrium of this game here, given A, obviously, because Remember here, there are like infinitely many possible subgames. So maybe it's A, maybe it's A prime, maybe it's A double prime. So A can be zero, A can be very large, but there are infinitely many A's. So that means there are in fact infinitely many subgames. So you have to find Nash equilibrium at every subgame. But the simple part is, well, when the game is not discrete but continuous like this, well, every subgame. Uh, is in fact a, a, a subgame uh, of A, right? So you change A, the subgame is going to be uh, different. Different, the payoffs will be different. But everything else, the actions, the strategies, are the, the, the format of the game is the same. So the only difference is the, uh, the, the utility functions. So therefore, when you find the Nash equilibrium, those Nash equilibrium are going to be function of A parameter. So A is going to be fixed, all right? Um, meaning the firms are going to take A as given and then maximize their profits by choosing Q1 and Q2, meaning their uh, the quantities. And then once we find the Nash equilibrium here as a function of A, I have to solve uh, player one's problem. So there are basically two uh, levels of optimization. Uh, level one is going to be finding the Nash uh, in this Cournot game, and then level two is finding the optimal A level for firm one. So how do we do that? How do we proceed? So I'm going to so apply backward induction, remember, um, and how do I start? Well, I start with the uh, this period two game, so uh, meaning uh, given A, so A is fixed, firm one's profit is the following. Uh, there's no cost, remember, price times quantity. So price is this, A minus Q1 minus Q2 times quantity, Q1, minus uh, no cost. Uh, no cost of production, but there is definitely cost of uh, advertisement. But you know, it's not going to play any role because when I maximize this function with respect to Q1, because I take A as given, it's just going to vanish, right? Its, it's derivative is zero. So uh, the first order conditions will ignore this part. You'll see. But nevertheless, you have to write down the profit function this way because this is the correct profit function. Firm 2's profit is, however, uh, A minus Q1 minus Q2 times Q2. There's no cost of production. There's no cost of, of advertisement because Firm 2 cannot advertise. So that's it. Well, what am I supposed to do? I need to find the best response of firm one and firm two uh, and solve them simultaneously to find the Nash equilibrium. To find Nash equilibrium given A, uh, well, small a, I'm sorry, it's not uh, capital A, small a. Well, the first order conditions, right? So del pi one divided by del q one is equal to a minus 2q1 minus uh, q2, uh, set it equal to zero. If you solve it, you're going to see that q1 equals to a minus q2 divided by 2. Well, del pi 2 divided by del q2 equals zero means a minus 2q2 minus q1 equals zero, and hence uh, q2 is equal to a minus q1 divided by 2. So, therefore, the Nash equilibrium is, uh, how do we solve it? Well, remember Q1 equals A over 2 minus Q2 over 2, which basically means A over 2 minus 1 over 2 parentheses. Whenever I see Q2, just plug this into here. So it's going to be A over 2 minus Q1 over 2. So this is 
equal to Q1. So what do I have? I have A over 2 minus A over 4. So I'm going to have uh, A over 4 plus and I have minus uh, Q1 over 4. So I'm going to have Oh, I'm sorry, plus Q1 over 4. When I send it to the other side, it's going to be minus Q1 over 4. Uh, Q1 minus Q1 over 4 means 3 Q1 over 4. So those 4s will cancel out. Q1 equals A over 3. Well, what about Q2? Well, instead of Q1, just plug A over 3. It's going to be 2 A over 3. 2s will cancel out. So Q2 is also A over 3. So once again, this is a standard Cournot Nash equilibrium solution. Right? If you like, you can put star here because these are strategies. So um, remember, uh, let, let, let me erase this. So remember in this game, uh, I wish I didn't erase the profit functions because I'm going to use it. But anyway, so remember here, uh, so there are infinitely many uh, uh, sub games, right? Starting with the second player's uh, decision note. So here a strategy, strategy for player, uh, firm one, I mean, uh, firm I is QI of A. All right. Uh, both of them, I equals one and two. So remember, strategy is a function that maps each decision note or info set to an action available. So here, there are infinitely many decision notes or sub games for player two and therefore for player one. Um, and so remember, this is one, but if, if player one chooses different advertisement level, player two is going to again zero infinity. It's going to be Q, Q2 prime. All right. And then, you know, all of them are not observable. Um, so therefore, firm one is going to choose between zero infinity. It's going to choose Q1 prime. And so therefore, the payoffs. Right. So if it is a double prime, the advertisement level, there's going to be another game tree here. So there's infinitely many sub games. And so a strategy, therefore, for firm I is a function which maps each advertisement level to a quantity. How much quantity I would like to produce. So when I first solved the first order conditions, what I got was Q1 which was a function of Q2 and A. And then I found Q2, which was function of Q1 and A. So what I did, I solved those simultaneously because firm one and firm two decides their quantity levels simultaneously. And then what I got is Q1, which is a function of A and Q2, which is a function of A. And so call them star if you like, because those are equilibrium strategies. Uh, they happen to be A over 3. All right. So in any sub in any sub game perfect Nash equilibrium strategy profile, both firms are going to produce exactly the same amount of output, which makes sense because their production uh, of costs are the same, which is zero. Uh, and it's equal to A over 3, which is a function of A, obviously, because if advertisement is zero, for example, the demand is negative, meaning actually there is no demand. And so therefore they will produce zero quantity. If advertisement is huge, they will also produce huge amounts. All right. Okay. So now I am moving up the first firm's decision. So what is it? Which A level should I choose? Well, well, obviously firm one is going to, uh, let me erase this. Uh, uh, firm one is going to choose its, uh, advertisement level to maximize its own profit. So what is the profit of firm one? Once again, uh, which is a function of A, which is a function of Q1 and Q2, obviously. But here, be careful, I have to write down Q1A and Q2A because remember I am finding a sub game perfect Nash equilibrium. So here firm one is not going to take Q1 and Q2 as just some given numbers. They're not fixed. Firm one knows Q1 and Q2 will be a function of A. And so therefore I have to incorporate those functions into firm one's profit function. 
All right, so what does that mean? That means the profit function of firm one is, forget about Q1A, Q2A for now, it's price uh, times quantity of firm one minus cost of producing anything. It's zero, but cost of uh, advertisement, 2A cubed divided by 81. Okay, so here, be more specific. So what is P? P is... A minus Q1, but it's a function of A, don't forget, minus Q2, again a function of A, times Q1, which is a function of A. Right? It's not just a constant number. What does that mean? That means as firm 1, I know that as I change A, Q1, the quantity, optimal quantity, will also change. Q2 will also change. How are they going to change? Well, I, I already calculated how they will be changing. Uh, they will be changing as a divided by three. That's the relation, all right? So minus two a cubed divided by 81. So if you simplify this, so pi one equals to, I'm, I'm gonna ignore all this notation. This is a minus a over three, minus another a over three, times a over three, minus two a cubed over 81. Let's simplify this. This is two a over three, so it's, uh, uh, a over 3 times a over 3. So pi 1 is equal to a squared over 9 minus 2a cubed over 81. So the first order condition, meaning what uh, a level maximizes profit, well, you have to solve this equality, which means when you take the derivative, it's 2a divided by 9 minus 6a squared divided by 81 equals 0. If you solve this, you're going to get two critical values, a equals 0, and a equals, um, I think, 3, right? Because this is equal to, this is 9, this is 3, this is 2. 2s will cancel. Uh, a is not 0, so a is equal to 3, yes. So there are three critical values. The question is, which one maximizes profit? Well, simple. The profit when a is equal to 0 is just 0. Profit when a is equal to 3 is what? Um, 3 squared 9 over 9, 1, 1 minus, uh, 2 times a, a to the power 3, 27. So 27, 81, it's uh, 1 over 3, so it's 2 over 3. So therefore, profit is 1 over 3. Well, that means profit will be maximized when A is equal to 3. So put star here because that's going to be the optimal advertisement level firm 1 is going to select. So that's it. Let me just sum up, right? Because I have to, at the end, sum up all my findings. So here, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium outcome Writing outcome is always simpler. Uh, A is going to be 3. Q1 equals Q2 equals 1. Well, what about subgame perfect Nash equilibrium strategy profile? Or, you know, strategy. Well, firm 1 is going to choose advertisement level 3. And then Q1 is, well, which is a function of A, Q2, which is a function of A, both are the same, is going to be A divided by 3. This is how the optimal strategies will be. So this is a strategy profile, and this is the outcome. All right? Um, so here, the, the, what is the difference? Well, the difference here, you have to tell me what the optimal quantity will be if, for some reason, firm 1 decides to choose A level different than 3. All right? So if you just write this or give me this, that means you're giving me the path, the equilibrium path. But what if firm one decides to choose other than three? All right. For example, for some reason, he, he over advertised and A was 10. What's going to be Q1 and Q2? So you have to spill out the strategy when you talk about subgame perfect Nash equilibrium strategy profile. All right. So that's the, uh, that's the solution of this game.